This is Granada, and now it's time for a brisk walk across those wintry fields to call in at Emmerdale Farm. Last morning for breakfast. Have to think there's something wrong with him. What about the stone? Well, I'll try and get through to Molnum again. Yeah, well, we'll have to get on the trip out. Don't know where Sandy gets her organisation from. Isn't me. I haven't thought about Christmas. Who's Jackie? He's finishing off in the dairy. You what? Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, he doesn't look ill. <laughs> Dad? I've got no appetite. Dad, are you going to walk around all day with a long face? Honey, I shan't get in anybody's way. Why don't you go and see Mr. Hinton again? I'm sure he didn't mean to talk. The matter is closed, Danny. And I don't see that it's me should go to Mr. Hinton. <laughs> well, that's the day off to a good start. <laughs> no fight in an artistic temperament. <laughs> I thought out the other loose boxes, Moyle. Fine. Have you signed that load of drums? No. Moyle have never were noted for doing out on time, delivering all pain. You can see that dog's frightened of him. He's frightened of anything that moves. Well, I must let him out for a run sometime. Well, I suppose so. He's always chained up whenever I've been up there. Well, you know what folk are like, love. They'll yell and scream at a dog and then cry their eyes out if something happens. That ain't much consolation to the dog. Mm. Well, there's now you can do about it, so just stop fretting. Come on, can you turn mm. around? Come on, turn around. Let's have a look. What's right. this in there, dog? We'll call it 52. 52? What are you talking about? It's to allow for your stomach. Will you hang on to that, please? Right. Well, what are you doing? I've decided to take on playgroup after all. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about that. Well, we have done. Since you think that a woman with a baby is capable of not but looking after a baby, and I don't, I'm going to be there uh, three mornings a week from now on. Oh, well, if you put it like that. Mm. Well, what's all this for, then? For playgroup party. You're going to be Father Christmas. Oh, don't be silly.
should have tried harder to get it to come down here. Mm. I said we send her the fair. Mm -hmm. well, it's Christmas. Jack! I know. But there's Tom to consider. I mean, you can't expect her to leave him at Christmas after she stayed with him all this time. You know what I think about that? Well, he's her father, love. And whatever the rights and wrongs of the last nine months, it's done. Well, we should be going there. Aberdeen? Why not? Come on, Pat. Come on what? I want to see her. Well, you could go. I'm not stopping you. Thank you. Hey, have you been through to quarry yet? I've tried three times. Oh, I'll have to go up there. Do you want me to go? No, hey, it's all right. There's gas hanging about once we get them walls done. How's the boy wonder? Well, still at it. Well, if it's another fiver, he's after he's at it. You should have gone last week. It's all trying to keep me on another week. Casual. Um, yes. Yes, of course. I need him a bit longer. Well, I don't think so, John. You know the situation. Oh, I'm not asking you to speak to head office, then. We need a relief milker, and there could be a problem with the pigs. Happen if you oh, can... Oh, yes, just... all right. Whatever you say. I mean, I've got a very busy day. I'll, I'll leave it to you. <laughs> no problem. Threatening him with something to do and he's off. What the hell's the matter with the man? Who cares? You'll be all right till Christmas, I reckon. Oh, oh come on, let's get to Rich Farm. Well, why don't we finish here? Well, leave it. We'll do it with a cup of tea. Aye. <laughs> and once they'd shut her in safe, that assistant would lock door and then fasten the whole thing up with ropes and chains and padlocks. Then it were hoisted up. I of at stage it were, dangling like. Then they wheeled on a tank full of water with a 15-foot python in it, and they lowered safe into water. <laughs> they covered all thing up with a great black sheet. There were a roll of drums. Then out she'd come with python round her neck. Now that were entertainment, Walter. <laughs> Saucy Sadie, the snake lady, they called her. <laughs> Saucy Sadie? You sure you weren't in Soho at the time? It was Spa Theatre, Bridlington, Mr. Wilkes. And I hope you don't think as I'd go to the sort of establishments as you're implying. Perish the thought. <laughs> oh, no. Not another joke. Nay, nay, there were one night, just before V-Day were, I was with some blokes in Naples and we went to this club. <laughs> well? Oh, nay, nay, I couldn't tell you that story, Mr. Wilkes. <laughs> oh. Morning, Amos. Mr. Turner. Scotch, please. Large one. Well, 
How's the world of entertainment, Amos? Vicar and I will be discussing acts this afternoon. If you've got a 15-foot python, Alan, you could be top of the bill. Same kind tomorrow. All right. Hey, Jack. You don't need to lend us a five in here. Don't push your luck, Jackie. Friday's payday. See you then. I do for you, Skilbeck. Still waiting for two tonne of stone. Ah, well, you know how it is. It'll be there. No sense in rushing into hard work. When will it be there? Well, as soon as you're the eager beavers, this afternoon. You told us yesterday afternoon. <laughs> Did I? You sure? Oh, well. They're as good as there. No problem. Just put check in post, could you? When we get delivery. <laughs> Jerry! Happen he might be more friendly if you let him loose now and again. No, no. Goes with the quarry, he's used to it. <laughs> Go bananas if I let him up. Mm. It looks as though I could do with a square meal to me. That dog's my business, Skilbeck. Not doing him a lot of good then, are you? It's up to me what I do with that mutt. If I want to kick him again, I'm coming back again, I will, right? We'll be expecting that stone, Mr. Nolan. Right. Right. Yeah, I've got it. I've told you, 
People like mowing them around. Forget it. Oh, no, I'd like to see some of them tied up in a quarry for a while. Look, there's no point in letting it get to you. Hey, how are the sheep? Or shouldn't I ask? Oh, heck, I've not been up there for a couple of days. Hello, Matt. Hey, Jack. Hello. Hello. How's the walling going, eh? Well, we've come to a bit of a standstill at the moment. Oh, well, it's good to see somebody taking an interest in the appearance of the place. You know, I've mentioned it to head office, but deaf ears. Well, how are the sheep, Matt, or shouldn't I ask? Uh, well, I've been a bit busy. Um, I'm hoping to have a look at them this afternoon. Oh, no peace for the wicked, eh? Well, they say this is the quiet time of year, but I, I'm up to my eyes in it myself. Oh, I'm sure you are, Alan. Well, oh, what about another drink? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, we'd better get off home. Uh, uh, thanks, anyway. Well, no peace for the wicked. I suppose I ought to get back myself. Trouble with that damn computer, you know, it doesn't even take a lunch break. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Henry. Oh, sorry, Alan. Yes. I think I'll have another one in there, the one I came in for. Where is he, Henry? Oh. Hey, Famous, who else? Uh, I think he's up at the vicarage. Uh, did you want to see him? No. I'd better have a pint before I go round there. Uh, you in chair, Mr. Turner? I'll get him a pint, Henry, will you? I know what he's up to, Henry. I do. Very naturally to me, Vicar, being it really blood. I didn't know you had entertainers in your family, Emma. We haven't. Oh. <laughs> what are we talking about? What undertaking? My Uncle Arthur, who recently passed on, as you know, pointed out as undertaking is a superior branch at entertainment profession. It is? Oh, why, they went out like a good funeral when it came to a show in old days. All very respectable, of course. Oh, if you could have seen them horses with their plumes and their brasses and the black crepe. I remember oh, too, Amos. Was very moving. Amos. Spectacular. His own funeral worked really up to scratch. We must get down to the concert. 
Oh, ah, well, that's what I'm here for. Now, here's a list of the people that have approached me so far. But before we go any further with that, we need to talk more about the basic problems. Uh, scenery, lighting, ticket sales, refreshments, seating... No, no, that won't do. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I don't care what Ernie Shuttleworth says, that dog of his can't talk. Well, we can go into that later. He's got fleas. <laughs> if watching a dog scratch were entertainment, we'd fill Village Hall twice over. I don't suppose there's anybody in Village who has been on a trapeze. I doubt it. I once saw flying tortellinis at Scarborough. Now, that were entertainment. Scenery, Amos. Oh, aye. Now, I don't think we ought to attempt anything too ambitious. Just a few bits of dressing here and there to liven up the stage a bit. Or perhaps we might get Matt and Jack and a few others to... Excuse me. Certainly, Vicky. Armstrong, there's no one even thought about you being in concert in first place. Everybody knows about my piano playing. Hey, that's why. See, Rummy Missing is round here already sabotaging my opportunities. Seth, I assure you, Amos didn't even mention you. Oh, you mean that mm, being it, do you? Well, I'm sure we can do something. Vicar, as compared to this show and someone who's had Seth Armstrong playing on his licensed premises, I'd like a private word. Compare? The shifty won't they, love me? Can't hang around here all day. But it's right in the middle of the yard. Well, you don't have to leave it there. This is Stubden, isn't it? Mrs. Skilbeck. Oh, aye. Skilbeck. He's the one who likes to hang around and poke his nose into everybody's business, don't he? Well, he's right. going to be too busy for that this afternoon, isn't he? Hey. Bye, Ruth. See you.
close your eyes. Oh, dear. Have a little play. Yes, all right. Have a little play. Don't you cry tonight for me. All right. Sleep? What do you reckon? Wide away. Mm. Well, perhaps he'll play and then go off. I made another pot of tea. Oh, it's lovely. Did you see Turner? Aye, oh, for all it was worth. What did he say? Well, he said a lot, but he said no, if you know what I mean. Oh, same as ever. I'm surprised you expected out different, love. Mm. <sighs> Keeps on agreeing the job's only temporary. When I try to get out of him what his long-term plan is, it's a waste of time. He's got himself into a right state by the sound of it. Oh, if it weren't for that, I'd jack it in. Ah, oh, well, money comes in handy, doesn't it? It all helps. I might be able to spend some of it sometime. Mm -hmm. Oh, there he goes. Whose turn is it? I've got to feed Ben. Oh, dogs before babies, eh? I might let him off the lead tomorrow. Give him another chance. No, oh. oh, it's no use. I'll have to go. go. That's what mums are for. in case there's any trouble. You won't need that. There's three of us, isn't there? Oh, no, just in case, though. It's an old Susie, isn't it? Yeah. Bit of a state, isn't it? I bet it shifts, so. Yeah, right. Are we ready? Let's go. Uh, if we don't get the money, I'm the first one who has it, right? Give me half the chance, I'll knock his bloody head off. that you owe us. I owe you now. Clear off. Correction. You owe us 50 quid. You better cough up, Merlin, or we'll have you. It was 30 quid. You'll do what? You would. <laughs> you will pay for the job you did for me. Not the last one we weren't. Oh, aye. You overpaid by the last one before that, weren't you? Look, you owe us that money, Merlin. All fair and square, you always it. Well, you said it was 30 quid. Shut up. You're getting now. Clear off. Right. Well, you can't say you didn't ask for it. Eh? Mm -hmm. Oh, now. Come on, boys. Eh? Come on. Go in, see with all more of me. Oh, come on. Right. On your feet. All right, all right, I'm going. Go in, see now. I'm not sure, so what? Yeah? Right! Let's be having you, eh? Come on, then! Come on! Come on! Oh, come on! Eh? I'm oh, not sending you! Oh, oh, come on! Want Sandy landing herself with some dead end job. I don't suppose there's much around here. Well, I wanted to come back and do her A levels. What does she think? She's not thinking very clearly just now. I suppose she's just got to try and put the baby behind her and act as if it never happened. That's easier said. Well, it'd be easier if she were here. That's right, Annie. The lass's place is back here with her family. Oh, well, Tom Merrick won't see it like that. And if she wants to stay with her father... 
I don't think she knows what she wants. She's not long had the baby, Pat. No matter how set her mind was, having it taken away and adopted is going to take a lot of getting over. I know. That's why I want her here, where I can help her. Well, you just have to make sure you go up and see her more often, won't you, Jack? Won't you, Jack? Oh, aye, I'd love a cup. Well, we left. I would have finished him, wouldn't I? Yeah. Mind me, Van, you! We're gonna have a drink while we're here, or what? We're skin it, aren't we? I've got a few quid. Fuck, are still talking about my piano playing, Van Oz, Henry. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Oh, Nellie Ratcliffe said she'd never heard out like my Rosa Tralee in her life, her life. <laughs> My talent's from what you've either got or you haven't got. Same as air, if you see what I mean. Uh, doing it on purpose, Mr. Wilkes. Just reminiscing here, boss. I know Seth Armstrong. Only purpose of his reminiscences is to break my will. Well, he won't. Oh, heck. Your services are required, Mr. Wilkes. Hmm? Stem from band again. Oh, uh, they're all here to mock me. Sorry, lad. Uh, what's it going to be? Three hours, please, Mr. Wilkes. Oh, mouth stuck in that position or something. Oh, no, it's just the effect of seeing you, Amos. Oh, I'm glad I make somebody smile. Uh, them lads are looking a bit grim, though. Must be to aftermath at concert. Another one, Vicar. <coughs> Not just a moment, thank you, Amos. I'd like a quick word, if I may. Oh, all right. Well, I can't leave Bar. I have a responsibility to my customers and their requirements. No, well, I, I just want to thank you officially for helping organise the Christmas concert. It was a most enjoyable occasion. And by no means a disaster. Who's been saying it were a disaster? Nobody. Well, if nobody thinks it were, why bring up the fact that it might have been? I beg your pardon? I'm saying if nobody thinks it were, why are you telling me it weren't a disaster? Well, because I understood that you thought that it... I know what folk <laughs> think, Vicar. Come in here and tell him it weren't a disaster. I know truth. <laughs> Amos, I think you've got the wrong end of the stick. Wrong end of the stick? I know one end of the stick from t'other. <laughs> I haven't got to know where I am today without knowing which is right end and which is wrong end. And right end is folk have been laughing behind my back about <laughs> concert since before Christmas. Seth Armstrong to name but one. Well, if you really want to know, I don't give that for what you think about concert. It were a disaster and that's all on subject. And you can all put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he hasn't been feeling himself lately, Vicar. I think I'd like another drink, Henry. Oh, right. <laughs> What's all that about, then? Ah, oh, it's that daft concert again, isn't it? <laughs> another three hours, and that's a lot. What are we going to do about this money? I don't know, do I? Look, he owes us, doesn't he? So... If we were to nick some of his, now that wouldn't really be nicking, would it? It'd be more like justice. Yeah, that's right. I suppose so. Yeah, of course it would. It's what would happen if it went to the courts. If you owe, you've got to pay. It's like that time when they come and took our fridge away after we sold Sally that we're on rent. Yeah, sort yeah. of thing. An eye for an eye. Eye for an eye. Well, what's more I've got we can take? Well, I know what he's got. What? What? It's obvious. Well, what is? Stones! Oh, He's got a quality. Stones. That's no good. <laughs> Why? It'll take too long to load him. Hey! What about the Susie? We could load that in a minute. Then we could phone him, right? And say if he don't cough up for the 50 quid, we'll flog the bike! We'd probably get more than 50 quid if we do it up a bit. Yeah. We could do the job tomorrow night. What do you say? Hey? Yeah, I'm in. I'll drink to that. Great. We're on. Hey, we could still take a bit of stone and all, couldn't we? Oh.
Some sort of notice said I'll get a summons in future. Oh. So Molan is pressing charges. Yeah. You wouldn't credit it, would you? The way he treated that dog, and now he's taking me to court. Oh, well, at least we know where we are, love. It's better than just waiting and worrying, isn't it? That's what to do. That's the problem. I suppose I'll have to get a solicitor or something. I don't know where to start. We'll sort it out, love. Look, I must go. We'll, we'll have a chat about it later, eh? Don't worry. Ah, you get to play, bro. Oh, come on, cheer up. You're in right, aren't you? Well, some folk might not see it like that. They might see it as I've stolen the dog. Jack! Hey, you best come outside a minute. What's up? Over here. Got one of the hens. Oh, heck. Bad dog. Oh, no, I reckon he's had enough of that treatment. I'm sorry, Ma. Can't be helped, Matt. It's done now. How did he get out? Any road? Well, it's that door. Needs fixing. Well, I'll put him away. I'll have to do it. Come on. You can't keep him shut up forever, Matt. You're up early for a man of leisure. Can't say I appreciate your jokes very much, John. Oh, I didn't mean out. What are you doing up here, anyway? What do you think I'm doing? I'm waiting you promised to get me Jesse Gillen's old job. Look, I've told you I'm working on it. Don't push me. I'll sort it out, all right? No, John, it's not all right. I'm still out of a job, and you told me your promise is worth something this time. Look, what are we arguing about? We both have the same ends, aren't we? Well, maybe, but I'd still like to get there before I start drawing a pension. Well, I did go and see Turner. What did he say, then? Well, um, I put, I put the case for having a full-time shepherd. You told him I'd work with you? Well, he knew that, didn't he? Did you tell him it'd be better having an NY worker doing what Matt Skillbeck's doing? Oh, yeah, I said that and all. Well, and? Well, now it's happened. He said Matt won't be doing it long, so best thing is for us to hang on and wait. You're all mouth. Do you know that? You're still all mouth. Look, there's a limit to how far I can push Turner. Push Turner? You couldn't push a pram, John. Well, there's not more I can do anyway. Well, there is something. You could have a word with Matt. You could tell him he's already got his own slice of Beckendale and he's not making himself very popular, putting ordinary brokes out of work just to put a few more quid in his pocket. Well, you can tell him that. It sounds better come from you. Look, it's not up to me. Why not? You're the shop steward, aren't you? Well, then do it. Today. And I'll come back later and find out what he said. Get to the point, Seth, will you? I haven't got all day. Fickle spinny? I will get to the point, Mr Turner. Yes, but I mean now, not next week. It's about that fodder radish you've planted up by Bickle spinny. Oh, what about it? Well, it's no good there, is it? <laughs> now, watch this. Absolutely fantastic. And I should have had one of these things years ago. Huh? Very nice, Mr. Turner, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I can recommend them. I mean, if your job takes you outside, they're invaluable. I've got Meg. Anyway, that radish should have been planted up by Primrose Dingle. Then birds will fight right direction for shooting. Is that it? Roughly, ah. Huh? Would you refresh my memory for a moment? You're the gamekeeper here, aren't you? Of course I'm, Mr. Turner. And I'm the estate manager. Ah. Now, I made my decision about that radish for very good reasons, and I don't expect to have it questioned by you. No, I'm not questioning it, Mr Turner. Good. I'm just telling you you made wrong decision, that's all. Get that to work, Seth, will you? Oh, all right. I'll see you all back tonight. That sort of thing. That's it. Appreciate it as quick as you can, please. 
things still seem rather slack at your end. Goodbye. Things could be worse, I reckon. That doesn't sound too promising. It's going through a rough patch at present, that's all. Well, I don't want to add to art, Matt, but I've a bit of a problem. Oh, huh? I've been meaning to talk to you for some time. What about? About what you're doing here. Well, I'm looking after my sheep, isn't I, John? Aye, and NYs besides. Well? Well, you're not making yourself too popular, taking a job away from a man, are you? What do you mean, taking the job away? Well, let's face it, Matt. If you weren't doing this job, somebody else would be. Turner would have to take on one of them he made redundant, wouldn't he? I mean, Jesse Gillen were full-time shepherd here before he had to pack it in. Yeah, well, look, as far as I'm concerned, John, I'm not taking anybody's job away. Alan Turner asked me to do him a favor, and that's what I'm doing. I don't see this as any of your business. Nelly, come on. Yeah, well, you carry on then, Matt. But there were five men Turner made redundant, and one of them could be working here. You're not going to make yourself the most popular person around Beckingdale. Cool. cool. And fact that I happened to bolt a door in a manner I bolt a door doesn't indicate out other than I know how to bolt a door. All I said was, you don't have to bolt it and unbolt it three times before you're satisfied it's shut. Oh, well, that's just crime prevention, isn't it? You didn't used to do that. Ah, oh, well, crime figures didn't used to be as bad as they are. You know what I'm getting Oh, at. I do. You're casting aspersions on my abilities. Rubbish! Look, all I said was, it's an indication that there's somewhat amiss. No to miss. Uh, and when you put it with all the other things... What other things? Well, such as constant bad temper. None of that. And shouting, oh, and, shouts. and interrupting when I'm trying to say something. And rearranging the fruit. As I say, when you put it with all the other things, it seems to me there's something to miss. If you want my advice, you'll be thinking of doing something about it. Oh, well, perhaps I am. I'll be back later. Where are you going? Taking your advice. Hey, boss. It's nigh on opening. Well, you just have to manage as best you're able, Mr. Wilkes. straight up there or what? Uh, I don't know. I'm not so sure it's a good night tonight. Well, why not? Well, what with the weather and uh, I don't know if we're ready. I mean, have you got any chain cutters? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I carry them on the bike all the time, don't I? Well, that's all right then. Look, we ought to have chain cutters, just in case he's chained it up. But there's somewhat in there. That's it. That's it. You get hold of them, we'll nick his bike tomorrow. Besides, look what Archie's got. Show him. I'm not showing it. 35 quid, tax rebate. Oh, my mother 20, don't I? Besides. From when he worked last year. Oh, he's in the money, is he? Exactly. Good old Archie. So he can take us to the lion tonight. There's a disco on. We'll do some pulling. Get him. Hey, you can pay me back some of those rounds. Few words with you. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go and sit, huh? Right. I saw John Tupton today. Oh, yeah? He reckons my working for you are putting somebody else out of a job. Now, if that's true, I'd be just as happy to jack it in. The last person you want to listen to is Toplin. And I run the show here, man. Yeah, well, that's as maybe. I'm not putting somebody out of a job. Look, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Of course you're not putting anybody out of work. And if you weren't doing the job, I'd put one of my lads onto it part-time. There's, there's no question of me taking on anybody else. Well, it's always a full-time job for Jesse Gillen. Yes, and I, I'm not definitely saying it won't be a full-time job again, but I've got to keep my options open until I've sorted out a coherent policy for the future. 
Why, there are other ways. Contract shepherds, a more flexible workforce, but until these decisions are made, you're, you're just helping me out. Uh, and I'm very grateful, man. Mm. Well, you might tell John that. Yes, yes, of course I will. Right. Now, what about that drink? Uh, no, I want to get off. Just want to get that sorted out. All right, don't worry, Matt. I'll tell John tomorrow. All right, then. I'll be off. Good night. Good night, John. John. Good afternoon together, eh? Come on, it's my shout. Isn't it? I want a word with you, John. What about? Tomorrow morning will do. Nine o'clock sharp in my office. Two pints, please, Henry. Right. Good evening, customers. Nice to see you all. Grand evening, Mr. Wilkes. No, it's not. Freezing cold. Apart from that, it's wonderful. <laughs> my friend, Seth Armstrong. It's brightened up my day as that seeing you. Are you taking me? Nee, of course I'm not. Just nice to see you again, that's all. I'll tell you what. Put a pint in for my friend, Seth, please, Mr. Wilkes. A pint? For that? One for yourself. He's fallen on his head and had an injury. Oh, and I'll have one and all. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't like to come round this side and get it, would you? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wilkes. I'm drinking with my customers tonight. <laughs> Are you sure you're not an Amos really look-alike? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I certainly am Amos Brearley, proprietor at Woolpack and friend at World. <laughs> Give me a whack there, Henry. Might wake me up. <laughs> he does make me laugh. <laughs> I don't know, love. Some days it gets worse. He's better off the lead. Hmm. Billy takes it into his head to start chasing sheep. I've been thinking, love. Perhaps you should take him to the RSPCA. Maybe he's just not suited to a farm. Yeah, well, they've got more dogs than they can cope with, haven't they? They'll not find him a good home, especially as he's not been trained. Well, I think they might be able to help, love. Hmm. And they might decide to have him put down. I'd make a big joke of me going to the court the way Molem treated him. Oh, uh, well, happen they'll be able to give you some advice over that anyway. Yeah, come on, tease up. Come on in. You know, I've never said it before, Walter. You've uh, booked then? I've booked, Mr. Wilkes. Next week? Three days. Good. As you say, it'll do me good to get away from village for a bit. Absolutely. One thing more, Mr. Wilkes. Note to nobody. Well, everybody's bound to know you've gone away. Oh, well, I'll just tell them as I'm going away for a short break. I mean, if they get to know about Elf Farm, it'll mean more jokes at my expense. So it's our secret, right? Agreed. Right. Yeah, you know, I'm feeling a bit better already. Elfy like. In addition to the existing Emmerdale Farm novels, a new book entitled Wedding Bells is now available at most newsagents and bookshops, price one pound. This is Granada, and now it's time for a brisk walk across those wintry fields to call in at Emmerdale Farm. Before, Walter, that it's right nice to know that you'll be there, ready and waiting, to the side at door when we open up. That's what I call loyalty. Don't you, Mr. Wilkes? Or thirst? Who is it said as loyalty should be rewarded? Well, it weren't me. 
Yeah, there was something more to it, and that loyalty should be rewarded with something or other. Now, what was it? Nation shall speak. <laughs> it's not that one, is it? And it's certainly not from forth sweetness cometh forth summer to other, is it? You've lost me, Amos. I'm trying to find a quote, Mr. Wilkes. In fact, what I'm getting at is that Walter here, ever faithful and loyal in service at Woolpack, should be rewarded, same as in quote. Uh, I think you'll find, uh, with all due respect to Walter, that he comes in here for a pint. Uh, not so much a desire to serve as to be served. Huh? With a drink. Mm. Well, uh, perhaps we should organise a benefit like footballers and cricketers do. For what? For Walter. Well, it's something to think of, Mr Wilkes. Oh, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, I'd like to go up to Emmerdale for a bit later on, if that's all right. You go for as long as you want to, Mr Wilkes. It'll only be for an hour. Take two hours, Mr Wilkes. An hour will be fine, thank you, on Amos. contrary, Mr Wilkes, thank you. That is true. Now then, lads, welcome to Woolpack again. What can I get you? Three pints, please, Amos. Certainly, Archie. <laughs> Dear, what's up with him again? I don't know, it must be somewhere in the weather. Yeah. Look, when do we go in, then? It's got to be done, hasn't it? Yeah, we'd best wait till about ten o'clock. Yeah. It don't matter when we go in, as long as he's not there. Hey, hey, hang on. He'll have his lights on if he's there, won't he? Of course. Oh, well. Going half an hour will be all right. Well, I'll leave it a bit longer than that, eh? Yeah, well, a bit longer. So long as we get the bike back to the farm, phone him. Don't want to phone him at two in the morning, do we? No, all right. Right. What's this? We're trying to do something to go up the quarry. Oh, well, let's have a few babies first, eh? Yeah, right. So we're going then? Yeah. Oh, oh shake that Burke! Well, do you think I need to see a solicitor, though? Well, I suppose you'll have to if you go into court. Well, you're talking about a lot of money, though, Matt. All solicitors do is cost you. Well, there's not much I can do about that, is there? Well, there is one thing. Give the dog back to Molan. I'll not do that. Well, you go into court for stealing it. You're bound to be out of pocket, what with solicitor's fees and all that. And for what? A dog that chases sheep and has to be shut up all day. You saw how he was treating that dog. I know, I know. I'm just trying to put the other side of it for a minute. I mean, do you really think you'd have taken the dog if you hadn't lost your temper with him over all the other things? I mean, the stone, late delivery, being rude to Dolly. I don't know, Jack. I'm not. There's some folk reckon I've taken too much on myself as it is bringing him back here. Well, nobody thinks that here, Matt. No, I oh, know. Thanks, Grandad. Right. But I did bring him. He's my responsibility, and I'm not handing back to a lout like Harry Molan. Mm. Have you thought what you are going to do with him? Not really. Can't keep him around here too long, I suppose. I'll try and find a good home for him. Might be very easy. Why don't you take him to the RSPCA? Well, that's what Dolly said, but I'm not so sure. Might end up having him put down, and I don't want that. Oh. <sighs> suppose I will have to find a solicitor. Just have to break open my piggy bank, won't I? <laughs> well, you may need more than that's got in it, Matt. Get in the van then. Come on. Take your time. There's no one about. He might come back. Well, I don't want to bump into that nutter again. Let's have a look at his office, eh? What for? You never know, do you? I'm not going in his office. Look, there's no point, Mike. Just get the bike into the van. Come on. Give us a hand then. Right, you two get in the van. Where are you going? I'm going to have a look round, aren't I? You didn't even want to come here last night. 
Well, yeah, we're prepared now, though, aren't we? Look, this is what we've come for, Mike, now else. So let's just get out of here, all right? Otherwise, I'm walking it. Aye, I'm me. As I was saying, a man in my position, I'm bearing in mind the number of people I employ and the sums of money I administer, mm. a man in my position can't be seen to be acting indiscreetly. Yes, yes, you've got a point. Anyway, if you'll excuse me, I'll... No, no, you see, I, I, I'm like a, a doctor or a parson. As far as the community is concerned, I must be above reproach. But like Caesar's wife. Yes. Yes, yes, that's the sort of thing. Uh, right, thanks, it was Carl. Uh, I'm just off, Amos. Right you are, Mr Wilkes. Mr Turner, can I have a word? Yes? Well, I just wanted to ask you about this job. What job? Looking after the sheep. Well, Mark leaves you a bit job going, won't I? I can guess who's been talking to you, and I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. I asked Tuplin to come into my office this morning, and he disappeared off to Raventop. There is no job. I can't see that, Mr Turner. Well, you're going to have to. Matt's looking after my sheep and will continue to do so until I say otherwise, all right? There's no question of me taking on anybody else at the moment. Is that clear? Well, it's clear enough. Matt Skilbeck's not satisfied with a stake in his own farm. He wants other people's jobs to give his wife a bit of pin money. There is no job. I'm sorry about it, but that's an end of the matter. Well, you can't tell me if he wasn't doing it, you wouldn't take somebody else on. I don't have to tell you anything about anything, Jock. I'd appreciate having my drink in peace, if you don't mind. Don't sound like Amos at all. He's pleasant, polite. He even bought Seth Armstrong a pint. Huh. There must be something wrong with him. That's not all. He takes every opportunity he can to go over to the other side of the bar and have a drink with, as he says, his friends. When did all this start? Well, he disappeared for an hour to the day. When he got back, he was like he is. <laughs> I tell you, Annie, no matter how much I've complained in the past, the polite Amos is much more unnerving than the old Amos. Ah. Well, up and he went to the doctor. Dad. Ah. Oh. I'm not disturbing you, am I? No, come in, darling. Oh, I only wanted to see whether you can babysit for an hour or so. Yes, of course I can. Oh, he should be all right. He's fast asleep. You are out. I'm going to Woolpack. I thought I'd cheer Matt up a bit. Good idea. I'll be there until tick. Oh, it's lovely. I'd best get back and all. Oh, well, I'll see you down there then, Henry. <coughs> right. Thanks for the tea. Oh, nice to see you. Once more into the bridge. <laughs> Bye, Henry. Bye. Well, it'll be all right, because nobody comes up here. All we're going to do now is get down the wool pack and phone Molam up. Tell him if he wants his bike back, he'll have to give us our money. Aye. And if he doesn't, we smash it to bits. He can't do out, can he? Because the law's on our side. I mean, what we've done is just what the bailiffs would do. Look, the sooner we phone him, the sooner we get some cash coming in. Aye, well, shouldn't be any problem. And when you tell him. What do you mean, me? He's phoning him. Oh, no, I'm not. Well, I'm not. I worked out the plan, didn't I? Well, Jackie, you lost his job. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. If it weren't for your mat up at Emmerdale, cash would still be coming in. He's not my mat. I'm not from Emmerdale. You live there. Archie's got a point. Well, that's set then. You phone him. Yeah, you know, you might be right, love. What about? Well, I'm thinking you might be right about the RSPCA. Oh, well, it'd do no harm, love. Mm. You see, Molan might have a name for mistreating dogs. I happen they could tell me some as a help out in court. Aye. Or they could have a chat with him and perhaps persuade him not to go to court at all. I'll have a word with the inspector at market tomorrow. Well, it might be the best thing to do, love. Mm. Come on, I'll give you a game of darts. Oh, all right. I'll beat you this time, you see. <laughs> no chance. Got post coverage. Now then, lads. Uh, three pints, please, Amos. Certainly.
Şey Jungman. Is that mine? Mine, oh, what happened? Cheers. That's better. Well, what's he say? Come on, what did he say? He didn't say out. What do you mean? He went in. His wife answered the phone, said he was out to the pub. Hey, he doesn't ever come in here, does he? No, it'll be Connelton. Hey, he doesn't often come in here. You all right? Yes, thank you. Why don't you sit down, have a rest? No, I'm fine, standing, thanks. No, no, I insist. I'll take over in the bar, you have a rest. Well, if you insist, Mr Wilkes, I'll have to do it, won't I? That's right. Do you good. I'm not in mood for a rest, though. So. Nay, I shall take up your offer, but I shall have a game of darts with my friends. <coughs> It's Lancashire. You're playing up my money, Mr. Turner. Now, I don't want to be heavy, because you're a good customer, but I prefer not to bet against myself if you're with me. So get some money for me before the end of the week, or we won't take your bets. Oh, you're in. Uh, I did ring bell light, like, but you can't uh, have Come on, I want to talk to you. Yeah, I only wanted a word about yeah, the pharmacy. I don't care what you wanted to have a word about. I asked you to come and see me yesterday, and you didn't turn up. Now, what's this about Matt Skilbeck? No. Now, he says you're complaining about him working with the sheep at Leckfell. Not exactly complaining. We were just talking, like. And you've also taken it into your head to tell Jock MacDonald that there's a job going for him here. Ah, well, if Matt weren't working as shepherd... It's none of your damn business, Tuplin. Who I employ or how I staff this place. Union's got to have some say, Mr Turner. Well, not as far as I'm concerned. Now, you've been trying to persuade Matt Skilbeck not to work for me and you've been using some rather unpleasant personal pressure to do so. I told him the truth. Many a do think he's standing in way of one of redundant lads coming back. I think you're beginning to get a bit above yourself, Tuplin. I don't think there'd be too many tears shed by your gallant band of comrades if you were to go and I were to replace you with somebody like Jock. Look, Mr Turner, all I said I know what you said, and I know what you've been saying to Jock. Now, let's just get one thing clear. I'm the estate manager here, and I employ who the hell I like. Now, Matt Skilbeck's looking after my sheep, and there's no job for your chum. Have you got that? All right, Mr Turner. But there's going to be a lot of bad feeling about this from the lads. Well, maybe they've forgotten how lucky they are to be in work. Perhaps you should start reminding them of that. Hello? Ah, oh, Christopher. What? <laughs> That's typical, isn't it? No, I mean, I saw it to it myself. I, I sent them first class. Yes, yes, you should have had them by now. Well, I don't think I can be held responsible for the inefficiencies of the GPO. Right. Right, I'll send you some duplicates. Yes, yes, straight away. All right, goodbye. Don't just stand there gawping, man. Get back to work. Precisely 20 minutes to opening time, Mr Wilkes. That's good to know, Amos. 20 minutes. Less than half an hour. 
Uh, Amos, don't you think we should have a little chat about this? I I'm sure you'd feel better if you told me. Told you what? You know what I'm getting at. I'm afraid I'm the foggiest. Right then, I'm to be direct. <coughs> I didn't want to come up straight with it just like this. I had hoped that you would volunteer the information, but no, we have to play it your way. So, I'll be direct. Sounds like you've been anything but direct. Right then. Pills. Pills? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Pills from the doctor. Aye, I do, and I also know as you've been prying in my cupboard. Since when has that been your cupboard? It's our cupboard. And you've been prying. I just went to get the address book and I saw them. You can't call that prying. <laughs> All right, so now you know. Yeah, but I don't know much, do I? I mean, what are these pills and why are you taking them? If you must know, they're for me nerves. What? You never suffer from nerves. Oh, well, according to the doctor, I do now. What did he say? He said I needed something to book me up and pop they work a treat. So I've noticed. I feel like all worlds, my friend. <laughs> <sighs> what are these pills, then? <laughs> the licensee, not a pharmacist. Some sort of tranquilizers, I should think. Well, didn't he say? <laughs> I know better than to ask a doctor something like that. There is such a thing as confidentiality in medical profession. Now, you listen to me, Amos. You want to be careful with them things. You could get dependent on them, oh, you know. Well, I'll just take them for a week or two, then forget all about them. You'd be better off chucking them away and having a few days' holiday. Yeah, I'm not concerned with holiday. Everybody needs a holiday from time to time. That's the sort of tranquilizer you should be taking. Mr Wilkes, this is a holiday for me, just to be here with my friends and colleagues. my dog back? No, I haven't. And what are you doing here? I want to have a chat with you. I've got nothing to say to you. Clear off. Hang on a minute. We don't have to go through all this, do we? If you ain't brought my dog back, I've got nothing to say. Not till we get to court, anyway. Well, that's pointless, isn't it? I mean, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost me. It's much better if we sort it out between ourselves. You stole my dog, Skillbeck. And we've got nothing to sort out. Not till you bring it back to its rightful owner. Well, I'll not give him back to you if you're going to go treating him like you did. Oh, I treat my dog as my business, Gilbeck. Do you know something? I, I don't like you. I don't like the way you poke your nose into other people's business. Yeah, well, it's done now, isn't it? What's the dog to you, any road? But I'll tell you something. If that dog... <laughs> it's a way of getting you into court on a charge of theft, eh? <laughs> anyway, this couple of laughing now, so, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Hey! <laughs> now, put it to him straight and he said it was no job. Now, that's not what you've been telling me, is it? You've been telling me there is a job there. Look, he's just giving you a line because you caught him on the spot, that's all. all right, it could be you giving me the line, because I know you're all mouth, son. Look, you can believe what you want, but I know if Matt Skillbeck weren't doing job, Turner would have to get somebody in. Not according to him. Look, it's obvious, isn't it? He's got Matt under his thumb. Nah, not only Matt. Look, Matt's got his own farm. Turner's a boss. They all stick together. As long as Matt wants to stay in Turner's pocket, there's not a lot I can do. We'll see what the others think about it. Pull them out if you have oh, to. Oh, come on, Jock. They're not going to come out, are they? They're all as pleased as punch to still have their jobs. They're not going to put them at risk. Right, fair enough. It's up to me then, isn't it? Aye, it's up to you to keep quiet and let it run its course. No chance. If there's a job there, I'm going after it. And the way for me to get it is to go and see Matt Skillbeck and tell him what I think of him. Oh, look, I've done that. It'll come. Well, I know what you've done. But maybe you'll listen to a stronger line of argument. Hey, 
I've been thinking of what we were talking about. Oh, I what with that? And I'm convinced if you went away uh, just for a few days, you'd come back feeling refreshed and relaxed. Look after Now, before you. you close your mind to it, just take a look at this. What's the point if I'm not going? All I'm asking you to do is read it. Now, apparently, this place is geared to publicans. Not just for publicans? Not just publicans, but it seems a lot of publicans go there. Oh, aye. So, you'd be in good company. Aye, I would, if I were going. Just read it. <laughs> this is a joke, Mr. Wilkes. <laughs> Anything but Amos. <laughs> what does a fit man want with Elf Farm? Contradiction in terms, isn't it? <laughs> Amos, mm. I disagree. With what? You can't consider yourself healthy if you've got to take pills to keep you calm. But I feel healthy with pills. Feel better than I've done in years. Yes, but what I'm saying, after a few days at the Health Farm, you'll feel just as good. But you'll be without the pills. Look, if I stop taking them pills, I shall feel like I did before. Tense, irritated, I shall probably start shouting at people. Yes, but that's because you're run down. You need a break. Now, if you chuck them pills away and went to the health farm, you'd soon start feeling yourself again. I mean, you're not going to tell me that you want to take them pills now, are you? No, of course I don't. Well, then do something about not taking them. Make an effort. I'm not going to no health farm, Mr Wilkes, and that is final. Right, fair enough, Amos. If you're not prepared to help yourself. No. Oh. All right, Mr. Wilkes, you've made your point. I'm not going to Elf Farm, but I'll get rid of these pills. You're right. You shouldn't be dependent on them. It's got to come from inside of you, hasn't it? I think that's right, Amos. Right. So, it's goodbye to these. <sighs> now, that's more like the Amos I know. Look at this place. Doesn't anybody ever tidy up? <laughs> That's even more like the Amos I know. I've not locked front door. Yes, you have. But I've not checked. You've checked it, I saw you. Aye, but you've got to check a door more than once, Mr Wilkes. These are licensed premises. Oh, then pills are worn off quickly. I've not checked cellar. Oh, things round here would go to pot if it weren't for me. <laughs> This is Granada, and now it's time for a brisk walk across those wintry fields to call in at Emmerdale Farm. That's why I'm asking. Do I look as if I slept well? Because if I do, you need to see an orthopaedic optician, Mr. Wilkes, and that's a fact. You had a restless night, then? Restless night? I didn't sleep a wink. I lay awake on that bed, I lay awake, and I never slept at all. That's what normally happens when you don't sleep. Huh? You lie awake. Oh, I'm glad you find it a subject for frivolity. You can't expect any sympathy from me, not since you've constantly ignored my advice to take a few days' holiday. I don't need holiday, Mr Wilkes, and even if I did, I wouldn't be able to take one without risk of my licensed premises running to pot. There were an ashtray left unemptied last night, and back curtains in bar weren't closed properly. Now, I'm not pointing finger at blame at anyone, but... Hey, if boss, I... I'll tell you something. I'm beginning to agree that you don't need a holiday, but I do. Where is this party? I told you, it's in Otten. I don't know exactly where. I see. You're going to a party, you don't know where it is. Well, my mate's got the address, have you? Anyway, I'm only telling you, I'm off now. Why can't you come back? Well, look, it'd be a bit daft, wouldn't it? It might not finish till four, and you're always telling me about drinking and riding me bike. 
Anyway, keep out of trouble. I always do. It's Christopher Meadows. I haven't received those analysis figures yet, nor the breakdown on the pig operation I asked you for. I find it hard to believe they've been delayed in the post again. Anyway, I need them fairly urgently, so can you put them through on the computer for me as quick as you can? Check his nappy, will you, love? Of course I won't. And if it's wet, don't leave him in it all day. Get yourself in car, I'll see to him. Oh, there's a <laughs> tin of main course and dessert in cupboard, and you will warm it up proper, won't you? Ma, tell her to get in car. Come on, everyone, get in the car. We'll miss the advantage of an early start. A hundred percent wool, Annie. Now tells. I know what sort of socks you like, Dad. Yeah, well, in case you've forgotten. Well, you've told me three times, so I'm not likely to. Better get him a spare set of combinations and all, Ma. <laughs> I don't know why you young folk think combinations are funny. I mean, they're lifesavers. What? You've left your checkbook at home, have you? Not likely, Jack Sugden. Well, there's only three and six in the account. Ah, three and six. Them were the days. You said I could get what I wanted. I know what I said, and no more. All right. Come on, Pat. Ta-ra. Ta-ra, Mum. Ta-ra. Oh, I like you. Ta-ra. 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 Be all right, then, love. Ta-ra, Auntie Pat. You look out there. Well, I reckon that qualifies for a place in Transport Museum. Hmm. Might have good value as an antique. It'd be a good bike if it were done up. More than up here's our 50 for it, would not he? I mean, it's got to be worth that. Nah. Nah, no problem. Do you reckon he'll call the police about it? Oh, of course he won't. He don't want them nosing around his place, does he? Not with all the fiddles he's got going. I still think we should ring him. No. It'd be safer than going up there. We'll be all right. I got me a bit of pike with me this time. There won't be any monkey business. <laughs> That's what you said last time with your stick. Well, that was different, wasn't it? I mean, a, a stick in a piece of pipe, is it? Do a lot of damage with this. Yeah, probably give yourself a hernia. Just you wait. I can sort him out. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. Matt might be well off, but if you tell him he don't need the money, you'll just put his back up. Well, John, we're not going in there for a cosy chat. Now, let me tell you, I'm not worried about raising my voice, and I don't need you to pour oil in troubled waters. So you better back me up, pal, all the way. I will, Jock, you and know. when we get in there, we've got to tell him straight. We've got to say, look, Matt, if helping turn up put a man out of work is your idea of right and wrong, well, you know where you can stick mm, it. Hang on. And furthermore, Mr Skillbeck, what's pin money for your wife is a living wage for me. You've got your property to live off. I've only got a pair of hands. Yeah, all right, but just... I'm not throwing them in swords, John. I'm going to say, if you want to get yourself a bad name in this village, you're going the right way about it. <laughs> Don't say that, say that, Joff. For, for God's sake. Why not? Look, we've, we've come to talk to the man, not to start a brawl. I'm going to talk to him. Ah, oh, you're talking me to showing us the door. <sighs> we've got to go a bit easy. Talk to him about your kiddie. Get him on your side. Make him sympathetic. That's the way to handle this. Well, yeah, believe me, Jock, I know what I'm doing. We're pushing at an open door. Matt don't like Turner any more than we do. He wants out of that job as much as we want in. Ah, uh, you could be right there. I am right. Look, John, I need this job. If I don't get it, I don't know what I'll do. Yeah. It were you three that nicked the bike, weren't it? That's right. It's a ransom. <laughs> Ransom. 
<laughs> you give us our money and you can have that bike back. Back? That's right. Oh, but I don't want it back. As a matter of fact, you three have saved me taking it to the tip. But it's all right, that bike. It's worth 50 quid. 50 quid? Ah, oh, well, I tell you what. You keep it and then we'll quit, it's all right? <laughs> Go on. Clear off. I'll have the law on you. And I've got no idea at the moment. <laughs> Back! <laughs> Clowns. Whose bright idea was that? I'll oh, kill him. Oh, shut up. Come on. Oh, come on, John. I thought we'd been through all that. I know, but... Jop's got some more to say about it. I just want to put my point of view, that's all. Fair enough. I mean, you're working for Turner as a shepherd, aren't you? Well, as and when needed, are oh, I know, but... I mean, that job you're doing for him is a sort of bonus to you, isn't it? I mean, it's on top of your normal job. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't got a job, man. It doesn't look like I'm going to get one in this area. Not with the way things are going at the moment. If you pack the job in, Turner's got to take somebody else on. As I'm the only one with shepherding experience, it might well be me. Well, he rings. He's no intention of taking anyone on for a while. How do you tell him? He can't do it, Matt. He's got rid of so many, they're just in hours in the day for us to work with sheep. Well, that ain't what he's been telling me. Well, it's not in Turner's interest to tell anybody the whole story about anything. I know you'll lose a bit of money, Matt, but it's money over and above your normal wages. You lose a bit of pocket money, I get a job. That's what I'm asking you for. Ah, I happen I'd better go up and see him. Tell him I'm packing it in. I've had a gut full of Mr. Turner, any road. decision, Matt. Well, I suppose it was, really, but I've been thinking about it for quite a while. I only took it on temporary. It's been going on and on and on. Yeah, well, you don't want that, Matt. He doesn't want it anyway. No. I've got enough on with him, Yeah, well, I only did it as a favour in the first place. Yeah. Mind you, I shall miss the extra money. Don't go telling me you didn't want me to start the job in first place. As if I would. Yeah. You told Turner yet? <sighs> Well, give us a chance. I've only just had it in the ear from NY's heavy mob. Can you manage? Well, yeah. I... They have got a point. There we are. Well, maybe they haven't, maybe they haven't. Any road, I've had just about enough of Mr. Turner. Well, you best go and see him, then. Well, I will, one of a chance. You have to make sure he gets the chance, eh, Grandad? That's right, Jack. We'll give him a nudge in the right direction. You're all right, Grandad. <laughs> yes, I'm fine, thanks. Come on. Look at it. It's a pile of junk. We've nicked a pile of junk. It only needs a bit of work on it. It'll go. It could be a right little flyer. Can't be any good if Molan dumped it. What's that title they've ever given away? Well, that happened. he doesn't know much about bikes. It's falling to bits, Jackie. It wouldn't take much to get it going. I'll have to clean up some of this rust. It's going to need a new exhaust pipe. But it shouldn't cost much. <laughs> but especially if we get most of it from the breakers. What do we need a bike for? I mean, you've got your own and Mike's got a van. We could flog it, make some money. Well, that ain't a bad idea. How much ring we could get for it? Ooh, I don't know. 80? We could try it at 90 and knock it out at 70 if we had to. Take off 20 for parts, and that leaves uh, 50 profit. Yeah, well, that's all right, isn't it? That's what he owes us. Hey, we could start a business fixing up old bikes. Yeah, well, let's have a get on with this one first, eh? Right, now, what do we do? Uh, we need to get a list of the parts we want to buy and uh, get off to breakers. Yeah, well, I'll have to strip it down first, won't I? Only I haven't got any tools here. Oh, I've got mine in the van. Looks like we could be in business, eh, Archie? Hey, what's this tool jacket? Uh, 
and still fast asleep. Ah, oh, well, I got him well trained, didn't I? <laughs> so, when are the ladies arriving? Well, I'm not certain that they're coming. They said they might look in, you know, if they had a chance. But it'd be nice to see them if they do. Hmm. Depends how soon they've spent the money. <laughs> Not huh? to have any money to spend so soon after Christmas. You're Henry! Right. <laughs> Women are canny. They always save a bit back for the sales. Huh? Oh, you know that. Sales, huh? of course. Right, come on, Grandad, you're playing the winner. Oh, and who's that then? Me, of course. Oh, oh you yes, you're right. <laughs> well, now, he's beat you then, has he? I'm right off home today, Sam. <laughs> you must yeah, be. Huh? Too many pounds. No problem. <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> You don't see me. Oh, I do feel a bit under weather. Why don't you go and lie down, have a rest? I can handle things for you. Yeah, I think I'll have a bit of a sit down in back. Make yourself a strong cup of tea. <laughs> oh, and uh, have a look at this health farm while you're at it. Still wilks. And don't wake the baby. Yes. I'll have a quick bite before I go, Henry. Right. What's up with Amos? Oh, I don't know. Brewing for a cold or something, I reckon. I looked at it under weather. Hey, I've just had a good idea. Oh, huh? Why don't you go up and see Alan Taylor now while the subject's still fresh in your mind? You've got a personal interest in this, haven't you? Oh, yeah, I have. I want you to back in working for him. <laughs> so do I. Well, go and see him now, then. I'll look after Sam for you. Yeah, I might as well get it over you. I can take Sam with me. I can go home that way. Well, I don't mind looking after him. No, no, it's all right. I'll give him a breath of fresh air. Uh, will you bring the caricot home? Aye. Come on, Jack. Your throat. All right. All right. Break cable. Set of piston rings. Set the point. And we're going to need a new plug as well. Is that it then? All right. As far as I can see, it is at the moment. Oh, it's all right. going to come to then. Uh, I don't know. About 20 quid. Right, if uh, we all put tender in the kitty. Right. The tender? Spend money to make money. I'll hang on to it. Right, we'll get down the breakers now, eh? Because what we can't get there, we'll have to get in Hutton. Make a start this afternoon. I thought we'd go to that party tonight. Yeah, that's tonight, isn't it? We can do this this afternoon. We'll get mucky, though. Ah. Oh. We'll have to get some swarf, get this grease off. Oh, you can get it working, cos it's our money we're using now. I'll get it working, don't you worry. <laughs> At least he's confident. I'm more than confident. I'm good. Aye? Right? It's not what Maggie said. At least I got in there, pal, which is more than you did. I, well, I... I wasn't interested, was I? Yes, you were. You told me that you fancied us. Shut up! <laughs> By play school and then double up Highland Piper, trust to fortune, then after that comes uh, full of fortune, followed in by quick reply, sweet solicitor, and they still continue to come over the line, and the last one to do so is, in fact, my major. Ah, oh, Matt, what a pleasant surprise. Come on in. C -c Can you manage with that? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, how is the little chap? How are we? Now, what are you going to be when you grow up? You're going to be a shepherd like your daddy. <laughs> Come on through to the study, Matt. Thanks very much. There we go, son. Hey, he's a splendid little fella. What's mean mine with mine by that age? Have a drink? Uh, no, I won't, thanks, Mr. Turner. I just wanted a quick word. I'll not keep you long. Well, my door's always open to you, you know that. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, um, it's like this, Mr. Turner. It's, it's all getting a bit too much for me, work-wise, like, so I'll have to... Well, I won't really be able to work for you anymore. But why? Well, like I say, I'm just too busy. Oh, you can't mean that, Matt. Well, if I didn't mean it, I wouldn't say it. No, no, Matt, Matt just a minute. I, I mean, I, I would like you to think about this. I mean, I value your services very, very highly. If you were to go now, it would leave me in a bit of a spot. Yeah, well, uh, I'm sorry, Mr Turner, but that's the way it is. Look, Matt, I've been meaning to talk to you about this for some time. Now, we haven't discussed an increase in your money, have we? 
You see, I'm very grateful for what you do here, and I was going to offer you an increase out of gratitude. Now, supposing we say... Yeah, well, it doesn't matter how much you increase it to, Mr Turner. I'm sorry, but my mind's made up. Your mind's made up, just like that? Ah, it is. Well, obviously, somebody's put you up to this. Nobody set out to me. I'm my own man. Well, then you haven't given it much thought, have you? And it leaves me completely in the lurch. Well, you said you'd others working for you could do the job. Well, this is a very difficult time. I must say, when I asked you to take this on, I didn't think you were the sort of chap who'd walk out on a job at the drop of a hat. And there's nobody else to do it. Well, you'll just have to take on another hand, Mr Turner. I'm sorry. So much for your reliability. You've not been straight with me, Mr Turner. It's all started out as a favour. I'll not be put upon. And I'll not be lied to. Come on. Well, thank you very much, Matt, for letting me down. And don't think I'll ever offer you part-time work again. Oh, we were packed like sardines in store, hadn't we? As bad as that. Oh, aye. Anyway, we all got ourselves something. Oh, well, let's have a look, then. I'll show you later. Oh, aye. It's like that, is it? <laughs> no, it isn't. I don't want to crease them up. Well, come on, are we going to eat some? <laughs> in a minute, then. We'll have our drinks first. Oh, I think I ought to get back in a minute. No, I'm not. I'm keeping you here if you have to be tired. No, I ought. Oh, Matt's quite capable of looking after baby Sam. Yeah, I know that. But, it's but just... nothing. You're staying for a quick sandwich and we'll all go home. Well, it's got every reason to worry the way Matt's been handling the lad. Why? What's happened? Well, come on, what's happened? <laughs> Nothing's happened, Glove. It's this idea of a joke. Shall I kick oh. him for you, love? <laughs> no, I'll kick him myself when he gets a bit close. <laughs> well, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm ready for a sandwich. Come on, Henry. <laughs> let's have a hungry man here, Henry. Oh. Did your own buttons up. Let me turn you around this way. Come on. Here we go. Hey, listen, that's Mum. Come on, we've got to go and see her. Can you hear her? Stand up a minute. Been as good as gold. <laughs> did you there miss you your are. mummy, did you, hey? Hey, look what I've got for you. Hey, didn't have a chance to miss you. We've been all over the place this morning. Oh, I saw you here. What's all this about? Jack said you uh, went to Turner to pack the job in. Yeah, I did. Well, you might have talked to me about it first, love. I mean, I wouldn't have bought all this for a start, would I? Well, I'm sorry, love, but, I, well, you'll understand when I tell you what happened. Well, I'm not saying you shouldn't have done it, love. I just say you should have discussed it, that's all. It's just as well I've taken the playgroup on again, isn't it? Come on. Yeah, well, that'll come in handy now. Well, at least it means you won't be working so hard. Go on. Tell me what happened. Well, hi. I'll confirm that in writing today. Good. Yeah. I'll see you next week, then. Ah, thanks very much. Goodbye. Uh, booked then? I've booked, Mr. Wilkes. Next week? Three days. Good. As you say, it'll do me good to get away from village for a bit. Absolutely. One thing more, Mr. Wilkes. Note to nobody. Well, everybody's bound to know you've gone away. Oh, well, I'll just tell them as I'm going away for a short break. I mean, if they get to know about Elf Farm, it'll mean more jokes at my expense. So it's our secret, right? Agreed. Right. Yeah, you know, I'm feeling a bit better already. Healthy like.
in addition to the existing Emmerdale Farm novels, a new book entitled Wedding Bells is now available at most newsagents and bookshops, price one pound. This is Granada, and now it's time for a brisk walk across those wintry fields to call in at Emmerdale Farm. Mr. Wilkes. Next week? Three days. Good. As you say, it'll do me good to get away from village for a bit. Absolutely. One thing though, Mr. Wilkes, note to nobody. Well, everybody's bound to know you've gone away. Oh, well, I'll just tell them as I'm going away for a short break. I mean, if they get to know about Elf Farm, it'll mean more jokes at my expense. So it's our secret, right? Agreed. Right. Yeah, you know, I'm feeling a bit better already. Healthy like. In addition to the existing Emmerdale Farm novels, a new book entitled Wedding Bells is now available at most newsagents and bookshops, price one pound. 